Um, so I'm David Hilson, the risk doctor. Um, I've been involved in risk management for 35 years. And um, my pitch in what we're offering through the risk doctor partnership is thought leadership with practical practical application. Um, so as I say, our presentation today is split into those two parts. I'm hoping to offer you some thought, thought leadership ideas around how to think well about risk. And then my colleague Magda, um, who specializes in your field, is gonna be talking about that practical expert application. Um, so I understand that um, each of you has you know, different levels of, of experience and expertise in risk management, and hopefully there'll be something for everybody um, in, in what follows. So um, when we think about risk management, risk management today is quite well established. Um, it's a discipline that's been around actually for thousands of years, but in, in a modern sense, perhaps for about 50 years. Um, and it's widely accepted in the sense that we understand what risk management is, what it's supposed to do, the kinds of processes and, and ideas behind it. And it's very widely practiced uh, right around the world in all sorts of different industries. I've worked in uh, 60 different countries on every continent except the Antarctic, which is too cold for me, um, and, uh, and most different industries. And some everywhere there's some form of risk management. Um, and since risk management is supposed to help us make sure that we meet our objectives, and risk management is widely accepted, I guess that means that everything's fine and we always get what we uh, set out to achieve and everything's really hunky-dory, right? Um, or maybe not. And, and clearly um, in actual implementation, there seems to be um, some issues with making sure that risk management delivers on its promise. And I wonder if you've thought about why that might be. Um, the problem uh, is not, um, with techniques, tools and training. I think uh, often we focus on the kind of implementation side and we think that if we understand what we need to do and we have techniques to support it and we train people in how to do it, everything will be fine. And these things are important, but they're not enough. And I think uh, you probably agree with me as risk specialists that we need each of those, but there's something else. There's some key which is missing, which makes risk management work in practice. And I'd like to suggest to you that there's a fourth T and the fourth T is thinking. Um, and we need to think right about risk because thinking shapes our behavior. So here's a simple ABC just to say that what we think is important because our attitude affects our actions. This is generally not just about risk. Our beliefs shape our behavior and culture influences our conduct. Just a simple, uh, some, some, some basic uh, truths which are also true about risk management. So when it comes to risk management, of course, we want to manage risk through risk management. That's that's obvious. But how we think about risk determines how we're going to try and manage it. And if our concept of risk is limited, then our management of risk is going to be ineffective. So it's really important that we think well, that we think properly about risk. For example, it's very common for people when they think of risk um, to have these kinds of phrases in their minds. Risk means trouble, risk means problems, or risk management is a waste of time because we're worrying about things that might never happen. Um, in some organizations, some industries, the risk uh, department is called the business prevention department because they're always telling you what you can't do and how it will all go horribly wrong and, and, and putting barriers in your way to being innovative. And risk management is seen as a cost, as a cost center where you're paying money for something that will probably never happen. And of course, if that's your way of thinking about risk, it forms a particular context for behavior which might not be effective. Um, another view of risk, which uh, we might say represents the, the best kind of thinking, would say that risk management is talking about what we need to know that we don't currently know and that we're advising people on what they need to do that they're not currently doing. It's an early warning that looks ahead to give you enough time to respond to things that come your way rather than reacting when they arrive. And it's a business enabler, not business prevention. Of course, there is a cost involved, but it's an investment and we're spending now to save later. And you'll see that these two different kind of mindsets or different ways of thinking uh, will result in very different behavior. So I'd like to suggest to you a more structured way of thinking about risk, which will help you to make sure that you get the best application of risk management and, uh, and, um, and actually manage risk effectively. So I'm calling this the risk mindset, which is six core values and core beliefs, which will shape the way you think about risk and through that then influence the way you act towards managing risk. 
And I do know that quite a few of you on the call are, are fairly experienced in risk management. Some of these things will be grandmother sucking eggs kind of things. And others, you, you just might like to think, well, I know I'm supposed to believe that, but do I actually believe it? And do I actually implement it in practice? Um, so I have six values which I'd like to suggest to you. And with each of these, let's think about what would happen if we didn't believe this, if our thinking was different from this particular core value. So I'm going to move quite quickly because we have limited time, but hopefully there'll be something here that makes you go, oh, I hadn't really thought of it like that. Um, and if not, well, that's great too. So let's start in. What's the first uh, of my six values or principles about risk that shapes the way we act towards it? And the first is this, risk is entirely natural. If you look in the world around us and uh, looking out the window, you know, we find uncertainty wherever we look. The VUCA acronym reminds us that, that we're surrounded by volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. And pretty much everywhere in the natural world, whether we're thinking about climate, whether we're thinking about um, science, um, if we're thinking about um, pandemics, for example, um, that uh, there's uncertainty and risk everywhere. And this little illustration on the right um, I love to use because it just reminds me that wherever I go, there are question marks raining down on me of things that I don't know yet. And they're impeding my progress. If you think risk is unnatural, that really we shouldn't have risk, um, then it's going to actually uh, create some angst and some uh, so, some some um, what's the word uh, difficulty, let's say, uh, in the way you approach it, because this isn't natural. This isn't right. It shouldn't be happening. But if you see that risk is just a natural part of the world we live in, um, then actually it takes some of the pressure off when risk when you're when you're facing risk, you recognize that this is just part of uh, of life. And so we need to find a way of coping with it and dealing with it. And of course, each one of us does do that in our in our natural lives anyway. None of us would have survived if we hadn't actually found a way of, of dealing with risk. So the first principle is risk is natural. And the second principle is that risk is manageable. A lot of people feel that they're the victims of risk. Risk is something that happens to you. Risk is something that takes control away from you. And in that sense, you know, we want to try to kind of protect ourselves. The victim mentality is one which is to protect and prevent. But risk is something that we can do something about. We can do something about even the risks that are outside our control, even external risks. We can actually do something if we see them in advance uh, to protect ourselves or to, to address them before they arrive. So we don't want a, a victim mentality. Maybe an alternative is to have a, a victor mentality, to say, yes, I know the world is risky, it's quite natural, but I'm not a victim, I can do something about it. And that, of course, is what the whole discipline of risk management is about. And pretty much for us and for the people that we serve, whether we see risk as something which makes us victims or if we see risk as something that we can manage uh, in, a, in a more proactive way, that mentality, that mindset is a choice which will shape the way that we behave. My third principle is that risk is really important. I've dedicated my professional career to it over the last 35 years, so I guess you'd expect me to say that. But risk is really important. Risk matters. And to, to um, explain why, I'd like to uh, just go back to one of the very first principles and ask you, what's the difference between risk and uncertainty? We all know there is a difference because all risks are uncertain, but not all uncertainties are risks. There are billions of uncertainties out there in the world, but we don't write them all down in our risk registers and try and understand them and manage them and talk to people about them. We filter the world of uncertainty somehow to create a subset of uncertainties that we call risks. And what is that filter? How do we decide which uncertainties we need to treat through the risk management process? So risk is not the same as uncertainty. And I'd like to suggest to you three simple words that can act as a filter for us. Risk is uncertainty that matters because most of the uncertainties in the world don't matter. We don't care about most of them. Why don't we care? Because they can't affect us. They don't touch anything which we care about. And the things we care about are achieving our objectives. Objectives embody for us the things which are at risk. And risk is defined as the uncertainties that could touch our objectives, that could affect our ability to achieve them. And so risk really matters because our objectives matter. And so it's really important that we find a way of dealing with them uh, effectively.
So risk is natural and risk can be managed and risk matters. My fourth principle is really important. Not all risk is bad. Of course, there are bad risks. And if we think about what kind of impact we're interested in, uh, risk is uncertainty that matters because it can impact on our objectives. Any uncertainty that could make it harder for us to achieve our goals, that could waste time, waste money, uh, damage reputation, injure people, all of those things are bad. They're clearly uncertainties that matter. But there are other kinds of uncertainties that matter. And to illustrate it, I found this funny little picture on the internet, which I use quite a lot, because um, I think the mouse here is a good risk manager. What the mouse is doing is trying to manage the uncertainties that matter. And clearly he's seen the trap. He's recognized the impact that he could be killed or injured. Um, he's done his risk management. He's got his little helmet on and he's going very, very carefully. And that's what we need to be doing as risk managers. We need to see the traps. We need to recognize the potential impact. We need to protect ourselves and go very carefully. Good. But there's another kind of uncertainty that matters for the mouse in this picture. It's not just the trap that could injure or kill him. There's an uncertainty reflected in the cheese. Can he get the cheese off the trap? That's not definite. That's not certain. It's an uncertainty that matters. He needs to feed. He needs to get strong and healthy. He needs to give himself energy. He needs to get that cheese and he might not. And so he has to manage the positive upside uncertainty that would be helpful if he managed it. And in fact, what the mouse has to do is manage both upside and downside uncertainties at the same time. If he only, um, let's say he, he doesn't spring the trap, so there are no threats, no bad impact, but he doesn't get the cheese, well, he's failed. Or if he gets the cheese off, but in the process he's fatally wounded, he's failed. He needs to manage both at the same time. And that's what we have to do as risk managers, recognize that there are good risks out there, upside positive risks, which offer us additional benefits. It's not just about preventing potential problems. It is about that, but also about capturing potential benefits. And we need to do both at the same time. So an integrated approach to risk management recognizes upside and downside and says, yes, we need to deal with both. And a mindset that says risk is always and only bad will be focused only on minimizing downside, on protection and prevention. Instead of looking for innovation and creativity to exploit uncertainty and to find additional benefits that wouldn't otherwise be available. So this mentality that risk is only bad shapes a behavior which isn't always effective. So it's a really important way of thinking an important value. And out of that, it's important for us to recognize that somebody has to do risk management. Now, I noticed when we were going uh, round with the introductions, all of you, I think maybe bar one, had risk somewhere in your um, in your job title. So clearly you're the risk manager. Risk managers manage risk, right? Well, you and I know that's not true, that actually we want other people to manage risk. But who? And you might well find when you're talking to people in your organization that they're going, no, thank you. No, I don't want to do that. I'm fine. Um, let me explain to you why it's important for people to take responsibility for managing their own risk. And it comes from this link between risk and objectives. If I have objectives, then any uncertainty that affects my objectives is my risk. And if they're my objectives and my risks, clearly I need to manage them. And by tying risks to objectives, if we have ownership of objectives, it naturally leads to ownership of risks. And so what we need to be doing to people is linking the risks that we're talking to them about with the things that matter to them. This is an important risk for you to understand and manage because it affects one of your objectives. And if you care about your objectives, you should care about your risks and you should want to manage them. And so that natural link comes out of that uh, or that natural responsibility comes out of the link between risk and objectives. If we don't have the mindset that we own a risk because it affects one of the objectives that we own, then we pass off risk ownership to the specialists, the experts, the risk people, and then the risks don't get managed by the people that it really matters to. Which leads me to my last of the six uh, risk mindset values. Proactivity is essential. Doing things in advance. Risk management is a forward looking radar that scans the future and says what's out there coming in my direction. And it sees things that are far off before they're fully formed, when they're still uncertain. We're not quite sure of all their characteristics, but we can see there's something out there coming in our direction. 
And it might be a big bad thing that we need to try and steer away from, make sure that it misses us or put some barriers in the way to make sure that it doesn't hit us or to protect ourselves to minimise its impact. Or it might be some big good thing which is out there. We can spot it on the radar glowing golden that could be really helpful. But if we don't do anything, it's going to go right past us. And what we need to do is to adjust our position to stand in the path of the opportunity so we can capture it to make sure we're ready to embrace it when it arrives. What we're doing is responding rather than reacting. And clearly this mindset that being proactive is essential will shape our behaviour in terms of risk management. So I think these six principles are really important. They're not just key theoretical ideas about risk. Each one of them shapes a behaviour which will end up with more effective risk management. Risk is natural and manageable. Risk matters because it's not only bad, it includes good things. I need to take responsibility for my risks that affect my objectives. And when I take responsibility, I need to be proactive to do things in advance while I can before the thing arrives. So I think all of those things should be self-evident to you. The question is, what are you going to do about it? If you accept that this is a good way to think about risk, a mindset that would lead to effective action, how are we going to take that forward? We said this earlier on, how we think about risk determines how we manage it. If we have a limited concept of risk, our risk management will be if ineffective. If we think properly about risk, then our risk management will be effective. So it's important for us to adopt these principles in practice so we can gain the benefits of the thinking that leads to better behaviour. Recognising that risk is natural, not something which is somehow wrong and shouldn't be happening. We need to accept this reality and seek to influence the risks that we face because risk is manageable. We need to focus relentlessly on our objectives, the risks that matter to us because they could affect our objectives and remain alert to the fact that there are good ones as well as bad ones. We need to own the risks that matter to us and make sure that everybody else owns the risks that matter to them and act while we have the opportunity to act in advance to be proactive uh, whilst we can. So each of these things are important and I'd like to suggest to you in closing four steps that you can take to help you to adopt the risk mindset yourself in any areas that might be perhaps a little bit lacking for you or to encourage others in, in how to do this for themselves. So here are the first four steps that I would suggest to you. First of all, build new thinking habits. Your mind is a muscle. You can, you can train it. You can exercise it in particular ways. I'd suggest if there was one of those six things that you thought, oh, that's new, or yes, I knew that was true, but I'm not really putting it into practice. Well, then you need to work on that aspect until it just becomes natural to the way you think. We can change the way we think. And we can do it through practiced emotional intelligence or emotional literacy. Uh, there's a whole um, a, a discipline behind this, and we can talk about this in more detail if, if you're interested. But um, emotional intelligence starts with being aware of what's going on and appreciating why it's going on and then understanding if it's appropriate and adjusting where necessary. What's happening in here in the way I, or maybe in here or in my heart, my head, my heart or my gut? in terms of how I approach risk. What difference is that making to my behavior? Is that okay? And if not, what am I going to do about it? So practiced emotional intelligence is a good way to change your thinking habits. It might be helpful to get some input from somebody else who you can talk to, bounce ideas off, somebody who can steer you in the right direction, a coach or a mentor or just a trusted friend that you can talk to who, who can be honest with you. Uh, we need to be intentional. These things don't just happen. If we want to change the way we think, we need to work on it. We need to recognize, and perhaps you, you know this, this chain of conscious incompetence through conscious competence to unconscious competence. When you know you can't do something, you need to practice consciously to become competent in doing it until it becomes natural and you just do it without thinking. So I would recommend these four steps. Find some, uh, pick some area that you need to address, be intentional and, and, and work on it uh, intentionally through emotional intelligence, get help if you need it, and then work through that process until it just becomes natural, choosing change in the way that we think. So I hope you found that useful. We need to think about risk. 
um, not just go through a process, not just through the go through the steps of techniques, tools and training, but make sure we think risk and we think rightly about risk, adopting these six principles in the risk mindset to make sure that it shapes behaviour, that it shapes the right behaviour that leads to effective management of risk. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'm going to pause at this point um, before we go into a break and uh, see if you have any questions. Um, and uh, if you don't have any questions, then I'm going to hand back to Shez and, uh, and we can go into a break. So I, I appreciate that was quite a fast run through. Hopefully it was stimulating and interesting. Please let me know what questions you might have. 